Good morning or good afternoon, depending where in the country you are calling in from. Thank you guys for joining us, for keeping the audience in mind what show visitors really want. I'm Katherine Perkins, the trade show manager, and with me is... Carrie Shopek, your favorite exhibitor liaison. <laughs> so first I'd like to go over the agenda for today, and thank you for all participating. Your participation in today's webinar shows that you are serious about the show and serious about getting the right results. So kudos to you. Today we're going to be talking about setting goals, delivering your message to the attendees, creating specific objectives for the show, action steps to prepare for this April show, and then we'll open it up to any questions. It's very interesting to me in my career in trade shows that there are many types of exhibitors, those who prepare and those who do not. I'm always amazed when exhibitors are spending tens of thousands of dollars and sending their staff and valuable resources to go to a show that they're not really preparing the plan like you would in a business. And as you all know, as business people, when you have an investment of any sort, there needs to be a plan. So today we're going to be talking about whether or not you are going to be meeting as an exhibitor group during the show. I always see those great exhibitors when they're meeting after show day as a group, and they're talking about what just happened. Who did we meet? What course correction do we need to make? It's like halftime at a football game. Strategy changes as the show happens. And you really want to make sure that everyone, before you go to the show, that everyone knows what the message is that you want to deliver. Are you organized in your plan of action? These are the things that we're going to be talking about in more detail today. So I just wanted to take a moment to go over what is TSDA doing to enhance the P2P Solutions Summit from last year. So this year we've really focused on increasing the value of the Exhibit Hall Only Badge by expanding the PSDA show floor theater schedule and offering greater sessions and content. So we'll be doing some vendor-sponsored presentations along with Peak Award case studies and an extended PPAI session. We're also, based on feedback from last year, going to be staggering the peer group schedule so that people that are attending as a full conference attendee, they won't be coming all in at once, that they'll be rotating throughout the hall uh, in a more staggered way. And then we will also be having our exhibit hall in the, our happy hour in the exhibit hall, and we've got our centralized PSD booth and show floor theater this year. So I want to start with how to prepare for the show. Companies who find success do so because they plan, execute, and adjust. First and foremost, you need to have a written plan with objectives. And the whole team, everyone who's going to be there, needs to know what the company objectives are, what each person is going to contribute at the show, what the expectations are, what they need to deliver, and how and when the team will gain lead. I think the mindset often is that once the show floor closes, the game is over. But this is actually one of the hardest weeks because the game actually starts once you get on the plane to go to the conference until the time you go home on the plane, and even afterwards when you're following up with those leads as well. Because there's so many opportunities for those leads at registration, at the reception, in the hallways. As we all know, that's when the questions and delivery of the message happens nonstop. So again, really talking about how are you going to react and prospect from start to finish, not just during the show, the whole conference. Without this required plan and that first step, positive further results are very difficult to achieve. It can be done, but it's more luck than strategy. So you really want to make sure that you've got your plan in advance. So pre-planning. What do you need to do? What needs to be included? Of course, you need to consider things like what makes your company unique. And you might think, oh, everyone on your team knows that. But really making sure that everyone is on the same page is important. Because at every show, every variable is changing, right? You've got new product line, new messages, new things you want attendees to really understand. So making sure your whole team understands we're going to the show and this is how we want to be perceived. You want to make sure that everyone is on the same page with that. Number two, who are your competitors? It changes, right? Acquisitions happen. They're making some new plays to fit in the marketplace. So really a discussion about how your competitors in the marketplace of the show is key. Where are they placed? How are they going to be perceived? What's their story? What's their topic of conversation? Both against you and for you and within the confines of the overall show. You need to talk with your team about whether or not your booth is properly telling your story. And what is that story? When people look at your booth, are they going to understand your message? Will they think, hey, when I look at this particular exhibitor, I see innovation. Does your booth convey your key message? 
We talk a lot about what your sweet spot is, and we've heard from attendees that they really want to be able to walk by your booth and know very quickly and easily what are you excellent at? What are you experts at? What is that sweet spot? Think about driving 65 miles on the highway. You've got seconds to react. It's the same as your booth. People are walking very quickly, and attendees have seconds to consume the message that you're trying to deliver. Does your team know how to engage? And what is the strategy for engagement? For example, I know an exhibitor who has a handshake strategy. Every time they shook a hand, they grabbed a hand and they swung, actually held on to that person and, and swung them into the booth and introduced them to the key person that they needed to be introduced to. So for example, someone who is located in the West Coast comes to the booth. I shake their hand and make sure to grab that hand and swing that person over to my West Coast sales rep. So it's a strategic play for how engagement is going to work. That same exhibitor also had areas in their booth that if the rep was busy and talking, they had a strategy for how to place them in a lounge area comfortably to sit down where they could wait until the person freed up within their booth. So those are the kind of engagement discussions that you need to have as a team. So what makes you unique? I'm sure you all know that, and you can talk to that, and your teams can talk to that. But how are they going to communicate that quickly and efficiently in a trade show environment? It's a different marketplace. It's, a different, it's different selling than selling all year. This is a different environment. Really making sure that everyone has that 20-second value proposition, that elevator speech that you all consistently communicate. Really important that you're all on the same page. And don't forget to make sure that your booth is matching that elevator speech. So if your elevator speech is, we're the new innovation leaders, where is that placement on your signage? How is that connecting to your product? Very few customers will have the opportunity to sit down at your place of business. This is the opportunity for your booth to present your company exactly how you want to be perceived. If you want to look big, you can look big at the show. If you want to be innovative, you can be innovative at the show. But that's the strategy and that's the discussion that you need to have. Knowing your competition. I always say, know your competition in an ethical and competitive analysis. And I always stress the ethical part. Because it's really important when you're at a show that it's your great opportunity to observe your competitors in action. I think you can do a lot of that observation outside the booth when you're walking the show floor or before the show starts. What are they showing? What's important to them? How would I perceive their company if I was a potential buyer? Who is working their booth and why? I think it's really important to understand what they're doing. What products are they showcasing? I talked a lot about having that change, that change course correction. Might be very important as you are preparing for the show. So again, the ethical competitive analysis is really a great opportunity at the show. As Catherine mentioned, as a group, after the first day of the show, you come together and share thoughts and talk about how are we going to interact and engage with our potential customers. Thanks, Carrie. Let's talk about engaging and beginning to engage with the prospects. First of all, you want to review your booth. As a leader, it's really important to take a step back and look at your booth. I've seen lots of booths with tables all around the perimeter, and it's almost like a fortress. People are standing there with their arms folded. They're almost daring you to break the line and come into the booth. And they're not really engaging. They're on their phones or eating lunch. When you're looking at their booth, it's not inviting. And as attendees, their first reaction might not be to cross that threshold. So you really want to set up your booth in a way to make sure there's easy access, easy layout for people to enter. The second thing is reviewing who and what you do so people can clearly understand that walking down the aisle. As we discussed, clear graphics so people can understand in a glance the key messages and what you want to deliver. Why should they stop? Also, you want to think about staff placement. It's really important to talk to your team about those engagement questions. What's our first question going to be? About our company, the industry, the show? For example, I've heard some great open-ended questions such as, what's the best product you've seen on the show today? That question alone will stimulate conversation. It may showcase what's a pain point for them, what products they're seeing that is really solving the issue, and that is how you can translate it into how your products can help as well. Or even in, in general, you could ask, what session did you go to today? That's one thing you have in common. You're at the show, you're in the industry, but you're really the expert to help them in the industry and lead them in the right place. All right. Creating and implementing better sales-related objectives. Objectives need to be measurable, attainable, and valuable to your company. Exhibitors who excel are the ones who set these goals for the show overall, 
but also for their individual staff people. Oftentimes, they will have purge a quotas and goals. And really, staff people want these kind of goals. It keeps them more alert, focused, and motivated. And it keeps them understanding what they need to do to qualify and get to the right people. Typical sales objectives. So the next slide talks about some good examples of typical objectives that you might have in the plan. Some of them are not just about bottom line sales, but other valuable things you may want to incorporate. Of course, introducing your products and selling X percentages of them, getting number of leads so you can sell more products after the show, all measurable and all attainable. Enhance your reputation as a market, market leader based on how show survey results. So something quantitative that you can measure is how you're being perceived at the show, what people thought about you coming in, and what do they think about you after. Getting three new ideas from the show to enhance your product. So this again is mar a market research opportunity. And each staff member generating X amount of leads or X amount of contacts. Again, that accountability at the show. And then, as we've discussed, you can adjust some of these objectives. Then you will have a plan you can work with with your team. So the next few slides will go through our five tips to keep the visitor in mind. It's really important to keep this show as a large focus group. Really having those open-ended conversations and questions, gathering information from visitors and customers. Things like, what concerns do they have about their business? What do they think about the new products and services overall? What do they expect to learn? Really making sure your team is set for the right questions first. Not to sell, but really understand some of the challenges or issues that the attendees are having with their day-to-day -day business. You want to have that engagement around what problems attendees are facing. You also need to listen. Who do they use today? What are the challenges they are facing with other products? Really diving deep with how they're be you're being perceived. How you're being perceived in with your product maybe isn't why they're working with you to begin with. You want to make sure that your team is capturing this intelligence to share with the group after the show day as well as after the show is over. Don't forget to follow up with those leads and those connections made on site. Number three. Who do you expect to talk with at the show? This is really a key part. The qualification is key, and this is the first line of defense. You really want to talk with the team about who will address the certain prospects. If someone is busy, what is the plan? Really talking in your daily meeting about, about making sure you're not getting locked into someone who might not be qualified for your company. You really need to make sure you have a game plan and strategy on the qualifications. What questions are you going to ask to make sure you get the right people into your booth and to the right people on your team. And if it's not making sense, redirect them in the right way. So developing two to five qualification questions to use to identify each type of visitor and who in your booth will be engaging with these folks. That's really important, qualification and using your time wisely. Number four is, of course, using the tools that you have to promote your participation in the P2P Solutions Summit. What I've seen is that people really love to be invited into booths. People love to qualify. You might have a special area for certain buyers that are invited. Make sure you have appointments. Make sure you have appointments. Exhibitors that do very well at shows spend a lot of time in advance making appointments and having a space in the booth for these appointments. So there's two different strategies here. Qualification with invitation and then making appointments. Making them understand you see them as someone that is right and making an appointment and that is done in the front end. Exhibitors that do well know how many appointments they have in advance of the show rather than leaving the meetings to the right person at the right time to chance. A great way to do this is the partner referral contest at P2P. Each, received, each of you received a company code that you can send to your customers to invite them to the show. The company who registers the most people with their unique codes wins a free booth for the 2017 show. Use this to target your attendees, letting them know that you'll be at the show and win a great prize through CSDA. If you need this information resent to you, or if you have any questions, feel free to contact me following the webinar. Number five, be prepared for questions and concerns. Develop a list of likely questions from attendees. Role play with your team what these questions may be and how to answer them. Again, making sure the full team is on the same page on how you're going to address attendees, any questions or concerns from potential prospects. In conclusion, planning and preparing for the show is critical so that you can maximize and leverage your participation in the show. Your planning must include a process for information gathering and message development. Trade shows are a verbal and visual medium, so all staff must be practicing telling the various stories until they are easy and authentic. 
You have to set up a series of team meetings, and hopefully we got that across, that good exhibitors are communicating deeply across their teams on a regular basis, each show day, pre and post show, to determine how to best prepare for the show. And then identify staff who will attend and what they need to learn to be ready. Those are the key planning opportunities that will lead to your success. So some final reminders. Um, all Blue Space exhibits are due in full. We will be highlighting your company product sweet spots in our on-site guide, so please look for an email in the next week to upload onto your supplier directory. Um, also keep in mind that a great way to find cost savings is to submit your order with Shepard prior to their discount deadline, which is March 13th. You will find the, which we will find in the Exhibitor Resource Guide on the CSDA website. Additionally, some of you may have received an email from Sam at Rentit or something similar. This decorator is not affiliated with PSDA, so please do not give them any of your company information or purchase anything from them. The only official decorator for the P2P Solution Summit is Shepard. With that, we'll open the floor to any questions. Um, please submit them via the chat function on the webinar. It looks like we have one question that came in. Um, we are recording the session, and yes, you will be able to get a copy of the presentation afterwards. Great. It looks like we had another one come in. Um, the question asks, are we invited to the networking game night? And the answer is yes, absolutely. As a perk of being a P2P Solution Summit exhibitor, all exhibitors are invited to attend the game night, which happens on Monday night with all of the full conference attendees and expo-only members. So it's a great opportunity to mix and mingle and network and have some key touch points outside of the trade show as well. Great question. Oh, here's another question. Where can I find the updated exhibitor information? So that's a great question. If you go onto the um, 2016 P2P Solutions Summit website and you go under Exhibit Hall, there's a tab called Exhibitor Resources, and there you can find a ton of information about your booth, the floor plan, and any other new updates. And as always, you can reach out to Carrie or myself, and our email addresses are on this slide too. We have another question that says, uh, what time is move-in for exhibitors? Move-in will be on Monday, April 11th from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. We had another question come in. Who does the company description need to be submitted to? Next week when we send out an email for the your sweet spot products, um, we'll also be sending out a spot where you can submit your descriptions, which will be on the director supplier site. So we pull what has been submitted for the supplier directory as your company description. So if you need it to be anything different, you can let uh, me or Carrie know. We had another question pop in. What day are show materials due by? So the supplier directory information with your company description, and like we said, we'll now be adding the sweet spot. Um, they will be due likely in the week of February 10th, but that information will be finalized in that email that's being sent out. And then in terms of ordering any op items, furnishings, what we recommend is that you keep this March 13th deadline in your mind so that you can get the discount order pricing. Another question came in. Does registration cost extra in addition to the booth space? So all exhibitors receive five complimentary badges. Um, beyond that, you can purchase more badges for the um, registration price of $50, but not full conference passes. And it looks like that are, those are all the questions we had for now. If you have any last minute questions, do feel free to submit those at, that, at this time. Or as Catherine and Carrie said, please feel free to reach out to them via email with their addresses listed on the screen. And our next webinar is going to be on February 24th, and it will be a distributor panel. We will have Stuart Boyer and Joe Walkup participating, answering questions, and discussing what they're looking for as they're walking the show floor. So this will be the second in our webinar series and our exhibitor training. You can also look forward to a webinar that will take place in March, and then additional on-site training that we're going to have on site Monday afternoon, right around probably 3.30, so right as the movement is wrapping up, on the show floor, in our show floor theater, 
And then we'll also be doing a post-webinar, post-show webinar for you to learn and you know make sure that you're doing those leads and catching up as well. So we really want to make sure that you guys are having the best experience possible and helping with any training. So as always, any questions that you have, we are absolutely here for, and we're really excited about this year's P2P Solutions Summit. We had one last question come in. Can exhibitors attend the peer-to-peer -peer meetings? There is an upgrade for full conference. It is a limited amount of for each peer group. Um, so that information is on our registration page. And um, if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us. But there is limited space for manufacturers, but we are allowing that as an upgrade based on feedback from last year. And we had another one come in. Um, we have our own banners. I assume we can bring along to the show and not use Shepard. So is it OK to use your own materials? Yes, absolutely. Um, you will have to use Shepard for the material handling and the, when they, your shipment arrives, Shepard will still be the company that moves your material from the dock to your booth, but then you are welcome to bring your own banners and bring your own floor covering as well. These are all fantastic questions, so if you guys think of anything else, please let us know. Um, odds are that if you are wondering if someone else probably is too. I think one more question just came in. Can you set your banner on the table? That is a great question and according to the IAEE rules, you are not. So there's, um, we will, it's in our exhibitor kit, but we can actually send this out in the next newsletter as well because we want to make sure that all sight lines are visible and there for all its exhibitors. So we need to make sure that everything in the back half of your booth um, can be is in the back half and that the front half is clear so that people can see their neighbors. All right, thank you to all of those who submitted questions. Again, if you have additional questions, feel free to follow up via email. And we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. Thank you guys. Have a great day. Thank you.